Hello, so it's Tuesday. So let's do part two of what a full self-driving truck will need to be able to do. Once again, I just have the GoPro mounted on the windshield so you can see everything I can see and it will just go over all the little details. So yesterday we looked at turns that had specific speeds for trucks, um, uh, making left turns across traffic, railroad crossing, um, traffic lights that were hard to see, construction, um, bumpy roads, um, and other signage. So today will be more driving at night, um, timing out traffic lights, um, caution lights that turn into traffic lights. Um, we're gonna look at some awkward left turns and another kind of awkward interaction between another truck and a car, which is some bad situations truck drivers can sometimes get into. So next day, this is the first exit at my first delivery on this day. Um, one thing that's cool here is at the end of this exit ramp, there's a sign that says no engine brakes, which is not gonna be a problem for the Tesla Semi. You'll be able to use regenerative braking and it should be nice and quiet to where it doesn't bother people. That's normally the reason why you can't use engine brakes in places. Normally I put my windows down when I'm making a left turn across traffic here because there's so many lights and the big windshield and the two windows and the mirrors all around the truck cause reflections everywhere. So I find it easier to just put the windows down so I can see clear. But otherwise, this is just another left turn across traffic. as a caution light but in a few hours it'll be acting as a standard traffic light this light is a little tricky it's red right now I would have to be able to look ahead and see how many cars are on the other side because if there were more than one there wouldn't be enough room for me to be at that light and not stop on the railroad tracks which is illegal so I'll add in the overhead video of what it looks like during the daytime making a setup at this particular store. The main thing here is sometimes there can be cars parked in the way and you can't just memorize data points and try to do it exactly the same every time you'll have to be able to to call an audible basically. said and done here I'll finish right by this stop sign and I'll have to go right around this stop sign without running it over to get out of there can't hit the stop sign can't hit the trash can This is another turn where I think that assuming if the autonomous truck can actually see the traffic coming both ways, it would have a little bit of an advantage because it, it would probably be able to deal with all of these reflections better than a human eye.
blocks from the store, you get to this very tight turn. Um, I wouldn't even attempt this if there was another truck coming the other way. I don't think two trucks can make that turn at the same time. Skipping ahead to this next light, there's nothing really difficult about it except you can't really see the cars coming because of all the bushes. You can see some headlights, so this is actually a little easier at night. to know when it's past the point of no return and when it may have to run a red light because sometimes lights turn and you have to know how much space you need to stop. This place is another fairly easy one. The main thing an, an autonomous truck is going to have to know is to turn wide around a tree like this because that's their that's your main obstacle. In a car, you mainly only have to worry about what's in front of you, what's behind you, and to the left and the right. In a truck, you have to pay a lot more attention to what's on top of you and what clearance you have beneath you. So this ends up being a situation that's not actually hard. You just have to know what to look for. Um, I basically have to end with the rear of the trailer somewhere where the forklift can drive up and unload the, the product on the trailer. So I can't be near any of all those holes and I finished partially blocking the street. This is what that area looks like when the sun comes up. Uh, these next couple turns are basically just making tight turns while staying off of people's private property.
this area is also known as the rice capital of America, so it's not uncommon that we're fully loaded at 80,000 pounds coming downhill toward the light. This is just a little awkward turn. With ones like this, it's really important to just keep an eye on what the trail is doing more so than the truck. So let's jump ahead to crossing the Mississippi River Bridge. In this area, it helps to know what's coming up ahead. You have to know ahead of time to slow down so you can make this turn. But after you get out of this turn, it helps to know that the right lane ends pretty abruptly and you have a short amount of time to get to the left lane. If you don't know ahead of time, this sign only tells you a half a mile before you need to get over before that lane turns into an exit only lane and to a road that trucks aren't allowed on. Sometimes you can get over at the last minute and sometimes there'll be a car in the way. I tried to stay back and give him an opportunity to cut in front of me, but he rode beside that car up until the point of no return. But that's it for part two. Let me know why I'm wrong in the comments.